This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and geek exciting times here. For those of you who are on a budget but you want a 10 inch Windows tablet with a Wacom active digitizer and digital pen, well, this is called the Cube i7 Stylus. Now, this is something you're just not going to find on the shelf at Best Buy. This is for you folks who are a little bit more adventurous in your buying. You can find this from a variety of Chinese importers. We work with GearBest to get this one, and it sells for around $350 to $380, give or take. Keyboard dock's going to cost you extra around $60, and of course, you have to supply your own Wacom pen or buy one from them, which is the, actually my favorite, the traditional pen that I'll show you. It's 10.6 inches, and in some ways, this is really a lot like Surface Pro 2, the last generation Surface. 10.6 inch Wacom digitizer. It even uses the Samsung Full HD 1920 by 1080 IPS display that was used in the Surface Pro 2. It runs on the Intel Core M CPU, which is the same CPU it, that was used in the Toshiba Portage WT20 that we just reviewed that cost $900. Of course, we'll discuss what you get for the added money you spend when you get a more expensive tablet. Runs Windows 10. We'll talk about that too because, well, that's another interesting topic. But 5 megapixel back camera, 2 megapixel front camera. You have an SSD in here, M2 form factor in too, 4 gigs of RAM. Does it sound too good to be true? It almost is, but it certainly is a value we're going to check out now. So this is the Cube i7 stylus. There is a brand you've probably never heard of unless you frequent Chinese import sites like GearBest, and they're the ones that supplied us with this review unit. Now, I picked this from among the many wares that they offer because it's really a very interesting tablet for those of you who are a little bit more familiar with Windows. If you're... if if you don't know much about computers, you just want to buy it, you want to be able to call up the manufacturer. If you have any problems, this is not the product for you. Pretty much after you buy it, you're going to have to figure out your Windows issues, your device issues yourself. If you have actual problems understanding how to use Windows, of course, you can always ring up Microsoft and bug them about it. What is it? It's a 10.6 inch Windows 10 tablet with a 1920 by 1080 IPS display. 10 points of multi-touch and it supports Wacom pens. It has a Wacom EMR, traditional Wacom digitizer. It uses these kinds of pens right here and we'll get into that more later. But that is pretty neat because there are not a whole lot of tablets that use active pens. You can get capacitive stylus but you know those are imprecise fat tip things that aren't so great. No pressure sensitivity, all that sort of thing. You get palm rejection, you get pressure sensitivity here. That's a whole neat ball of wax there. So you note takers, you artists, you're going to like this. You Photoshop retouchers, as long as you're okay working in a relatively small 10.6 inch display. In many ways, this is sort of like the poor man's Surface Pro 2. But it's running on updated internals. It's running on the Intel Core M, fifth generation Broadwell. That's the M5Y10. And that is nominally an 800 megahertz baseline CPU with turbo boost to 2 gigahertz. Now, in the case of the, the Core M, it it, it spends a lot of time in boost normally, so the, the base clock rate is there to save power when possible. But most of the time, for example, this one's running at 1 gigahertz, and it fearlessly will run at 2 gigahertz for long periods of time. And when you see our benchmark results, you'll see the graph and see how much time it spends at 2 gigahertz when it's necessary. So we have Windows 10 here. And that came pre-installed. GearBest will ship it set up to do English. Now, the thing is, you'll still see some Chinese characters here and there, like in the restart dialogue and all that sort of thing. So here's how uh, you got to be kind of techie geeky point number one. We go to our clock and language settings. You're going to have to check all these and make sure they match your language. I'm going to assume right now that you're a U.S. English speaking buyer just because that's what we are so we're going to cover what we did right here. So you're going to make sure that your language is set. Now they'll set it up with the US English keyboard and you'll see your icons in English and stuff but one thing I noticed in terms of things like you know Windows dialogues occasionally showing up with Chinese in them is you have to do a little bit more. You go to region and then you go to administrative and after you've set up everything you can possibly set up for yourself in English if GearBest has missed anything then you're going to do copy settings and you're going to copy it so it overrides the other two over here, the new user settings, the system settings, and then everything will be 100% in English for you. So there is pro tip number one. This has four gigs of RAM inside, not upgradable. It's soldered on the motherboard, which is not unusual for a Windows tablet. There's just not room for RAM slots in here. Interestingly, it has a SSD drive, that part's not interesting, that's pretty expected. It's a real SSD, not one of those eMMC kind of storage things you'll see in an Intel Atom, so it's fast storage, but not only that, it's an M2 drive. Now it uses the short half height, 
2242 M2 size drive, and it's using a SATA 3 interface. With M2, you know, they can use either PCIe or SATA 3. So it's SATA 3, so it's not the, the super wicked fast, but performance were pretty good on this performance numbers. Uh, it is a 64 gig 4C brand, F O R S E E SSD. You could open this up, it takes some patience. To separate the back off, there are plastic clips that hold it on. I recommend starting around near the power connector if you want to do that to put a bigger SSD drive in there because 64 gigs is kind of tight. And you can see here, this is our Crystal Discmark speed test results for the SSD drive. It's pretty respectable. It is not the world's fastest we've seen, but it's pretty darn fast. So it's a good speedy interface. So for some of the 350 bucks, I mean, not bad. Let's talk about Windows 10. When this originally started shipping over a year ago, it was Windows 8.1 with Bing. That was the, the low-cost operating system manufacturers could get with less money. That pretty much was the same as the Home Edition. So now we've got it with Windows 10. By the way, if you get Windows 8.1 with Bing, there is no Windows 10 with Bing, so it just upgrades to Windows 10 Home, which is pretty cool. That's nice. In this case, Gearbest put Windows 10 Pro on it, which it's real unlikely at this price that it actually shipped with. So when I looked at the licensing on this, it is using an enterprise volume license. So when you buy products from China, there's a whole lot of monkey business going on with licensing and stuff. So it's a legit enterprise license, but it's not the way, you know, it's not your traditional OEM license that's on here. I don't think it's ever going to, you know, get shut off and expire, but something to be aware of. Also, the... <laughs> sometimes you get you know sneaky software and some malware from China this didn't have anything on it except for one little hack that was used to crack activation for Microsoft Office on it which Windows antivirus the built-in antivirus will actually find an offer to remove if you want it considers it a medium threat because that hack itself can be hacked by malicious folks and other than that there was absolutely nothing wrong with the Windows install in here it was pretty clean it was very legit and it doesn't have all the bloatware that you'll see on some American brand computers that have a million deals going on with other companies so you get a lot of junk on here. You can run this to start in tablet mode if you want with the, the larger live tile interface. I prefer to use it this way as more of a desktop. Windows 10 has gotten even better dealing with relatively small touch points with your fingers. They do sell an optional keyboard dock for this and it's pretty much just a keyboard, no extra battery or anything like that and that runs around $60 or so and it sits right inside and we'll splice in a picture of it so you can see what it looks like. Being 10.6 inches, it's not going to be the world's hugest keyboard, it's going to look like a little netbook. You can use Bluetooth keyboards, this has Bluetooth 4.0, it's real tech. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. It's only a single band, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi 802.11n. Again, for the price, some things are going to have to give. That's one of them. This is what the box looks like that you get it in and it has the URL for the company which is 51cube.com. It's a box. There it is. It comes with a wall ward style charger, not the laptop style charger, which is interesting for a Core M. It is adequate. It manages to power it just fine. It doesn't lose power even when using the com computer and charging up. So, And you can get this with either US or UK prongs from Gearbest. So we're going to take a look around the device. It's the usual 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Ratio. By the way, it, it's an IPS display, very good viewing angles. Again, it's the same display used in the Surface Pro 2, so it's also very bright. 350 nits of brightness, according to our Spider Pro 4 colorimeter. Uh, color gamut is pretty good on this. Contrast is very good. It's 670 to 1. Uh, color gamut is 75% of sRGB. Now, a premium product would be closer to 100%, but for the price, again, it's not bad. It looks pretty colorful. Now, unlike Surface Pro 2, which had laminated the bonded on glass so that the display underneath and the glass were very close together, you can see the teeny bit of distance between the glass and the actual display. Now, it's hard to see unless you can see it in person, but it's not going to have all those nice little bells and whistles. But honestly, look at it in person, it's a pretty nice display. Here on the side we have all of our ports. We have a micro USB 3.0 port now, and that's where the charger plugs in. Now it comes with the cable too, with the USB adapter cable with the micro end here and then the female on this side so you can plug in any USB peripheral. I mean this is a, a Windows machine so anything that you have a driver for that works in Windows will work here including LTE dongles, printers, mice, game controllers, all that sort of thing. I know transfer speeds weren't super duper fast. They weren't like USB 3.0 level, more like 2.0 level out of this port. It's not the end of the world again for $350.
micro SD card slot here. We tested with the cards up to 64 gig. It worked just fine. And we have a mini HDMI, not micro HDMI port, in case you want to attach it to a monitor or to your TV. And there's your 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Pretty simple up top. We have a volume control right there. And there's the power button, built-in microphone for video chat. And on this side, we have this little stereo speakers. It sounds actually not bad for a 10-inch tablet. I, usually they sound very anemic, and this is, you know, a little anemic, but not that bad. And here's the back in beautiful blue. This is actually a metal alloy, so it <laughs> gives it a little bit of class. I know it looks like plastic because of the paint job they put on it. Uh, high styling looks here, not so much. This looks like, no offense, Ace, but to Acer's tablets, but one of their old Android Iconia tablets from the days of old. It does transfer heat, though. I can tell you that if you're playing games, doing something that's pretty intensive like that, you'll feel a good amount of heat coming from particularly this section right here. It's not enough to burn you, but it's going to, you know, make your fingers get a little sweaty. And you've got markings as to what the ports are over there, too, as a little helper. 5 megapixel camera on the back is actually not that bad. And the 2 megapixel camera on the front is pretty decent, too. I mean, it's a tablet, you know. That is what it is. And this is the connector where it mates to the keyboard should you go with the optional keyboard on it. It has the usual creature comforts like an accelerometer so you can rotate the screen any which way you want. Including using it upside down, which we were doing a minute ago. Standard Windows tablet stuff, not too bad. Sabre performance. Well, it performs like your average Core M. It performs just as well as big name brand ones. And PC Mark. Eight here, the home accelerated test. You can see we scored 2435, which is very close to what the Toshiba tablet scored that we just showed you. And you can see the, the, the top higher number is uh, the clock speed it's running at. And the temperature bar is below. So the temperatures on the CPU actually internally are not that bad. I haven't seen it go higher than about 75 or 78 centigrade. And the clock speed spends a lot of time happily up there at 2 gigahertz. So it performs well. The internal cooling in terms of component health are perfectly sufficient. It's just because it has the metal back that you're going to feel the heat a little bit, like I said. And again, it's not something that's going to burn you. You're just going to notice it. For W Prime, it computed Pi in 24.3 seconds, which is exactly average for this Intel Core M CPU. Geekbench 3, single core, 2178. The multi-core is 4532. So Intel tunes the Core M to do well on certain benchmarks. And honestly, it's not a Core i5, but it's perfectly usable. And I find this a little bit more responsive, probably because it's a fairly clean install of Windows without all sorts of junkware and added stuff that you really didn't want on there anyway. It, it's, it's a decent enough performer. So how about speakers and what it looks like for video playback? We're on our website, Mobile Tech Review here, and we'll check out a video to see how well it does and we'll look at the Moto X Pure Edition video. I have this at 125% scaling by the way uh, from the factory they shipped it at 150% scaling for both the desktop which I left set that way and 150% here. I like things a little bit smaller that's up to you. From Mobile Tech Review, and it's Moto X time so again. There it is, it's 75% volume. Edition, the Moto X Pier, known as the Moto X Style overseas, same phone. Looks great. It certainly is usable in terms of the speakers. Obviously, if you want really good quality audio, you're going to want to use some headphones. So, last thing, this is good for using OneNote for note taking or any other note application of your choice. This is a standard Wacom digitizer with the EMR pen. This is similar to what uh, GearBest sells. In fact, it's identical. And this is actually something that I've had for years. This was known as the Wacom Tablet PC Pen that worked with all the Windows tablet PCs for a while. And it has the racer on the end, which actually does work and is recognized here. And they ship it with a Wacom control panel and drivers pre-installed on this. So that's good for those of you who still need WinTab, for example. Now, other Wacom pens will work. This is the Feel Pen that they sell, which literally feels nice. It has a nice surface. It looks pretty luxurious. I always find that the pen tip is a little bit off on this pen compared to just about every other pen though. Lastly, if you happen to have a Samsung Galaxy Note tablet or phone, and this is one of their Samsung pens, this also works as well. And you have things like hovering, all the usual stuff you expect with Wacom. This is completely Wacom. In fact, we're going to 
Launch Autodesk Sketchbook so you can see. And you can see I'm quite a bit distance off of the display and you've got the usual hover there and I'm going to switch to the pen I like. The, the edge accuracy of this has actually been quite good and better than I've seen on some more expensive tablet PCs with Wacom products. And it does have palm rejection. I'm just not resting my hand on the glass because of the position I'm in to demonstrate this, but it does. That's inherent to the technology. So we've got the usual pressure sensitivity here. So if I want to draw myself a sideways apple, no problem. And you can see I'm getting a variety of line depths here. If I press really hard, you've got it. Keeps up just fine, going really fast. Let's make some crazy circles. One of the usual tests is to see how fast it can draw circles. It works just fine. I've tested this with Art Rage. I've tested this with Photoshop CC. It's nice. It's great. If you're into digital artwork or note-taking, good times. Again, the pen's not in the box, so you're going to have to source the pen yourself, but you've seen some options here, or you could just buy the one that they actually sell at GearBest if you happen to buy this from GearBest. So how about battery life? This is a 33-watt-hour battery. That's actually similar in capacity, again, to the Toshiba. It's 4,500 milliamps. Core M's are pretty power frugal, but it depends on how you use them. Given the fact that they have the very aggressive turbo boost and they can spend a lot of time boosted, if you're just surfing the web, sending some emails, doing social networking, you're going to get better battery life than if you're using this for Adobe Photoshop, if you're using it to stream full HD video, that sort of thing. On average, about six hours, that's what I've gotten. If I'm really pushing it hard, sometimes it's five and a half. If you are more conservative and you use the auto brightness setting, which I happen to turn off because I never enjoy auto brightness, then you might even be able to push it to six and a half or a little bit better. So. Not so unusual. I mean, the average really is around six hours for these sort of tablets, and we hoped that Core M was going to bring a whole lot more battery improvements, but so far it really hasn't been strikingly better than a Core i3, Core i5, interestingly enough. It is, however, fanless and silent, so you're never going to hear the fan whirring, even if you're playing games. For example, we've got Halo Spartan Assault on here. It plays beautifully, and you get toasty on the back, but it is quiet other than the sound of the game and the shooting. All right, now we're in Halo Spartan Assault, which is a live tile game. You, you can install, you know, desktop games, but it's a Core M with HD 5300 graphics, folks. So, you know, it's not going to be playing Skyrim in full HD on high settings either. Look at me shooting a rock. <laughs> there we go. It plays perfectly smoothly and well. I'm going to take this out before it takes me out. So it works just great. The screen is really pretty nice on it, too. Back is a little toasty, but not hurting me by any means. A little bit warm here. So that's Halo Spartan Assault running on the Cube i7 stylus. So all in all, for around 350 bucks for tablet only, it's hard not to like this tablet. Like I said, if you're a little bit adventurous, if you're willing to take the chance, it's zippy. It has a clean install of Windows on it without any bloatware. It's capable of this light level gaming that you see right here. It's got a Wacom digitizer, which isn't a common feature, and you usually say you're going to pay extra for it. It's not bad at all, with the caveats that I mentioned. Yeah. One other thing I'd like to tell you is that this came from the factory with a screen protector installed. You might not even notice it at first. Uh, because I kind of gave it a wet wash to clean the screen there. I got a little water got underneath one corner, and I ended up peeling it off. It's a pretty cheap plastic screen protector. It didn't do much, and it scratches. So if you buy one of these and you think your screen is scratching, it's not. It's the cheap plastic screen protector that comes installed from the factory. Get rid of it. So that's the Cube i7 stylus tablet. Again, don't be fooled by the i7 in the name. It's not a Core i7. It's a Core M. For $350, give or take, it's pretty amazing stuff. Now you got, like I said, you got to be a more savvy user to use this because you have to be able to deal with changing some language settings and stuff like that since this comes from China. And they do put English windows on it, but not all the settings are that way. And if you need support, really, mostly it's up to you to find it and figure it out for yourself. So if you're willing to take the chance and get yourself a Wacom pen, that, or Wacom pen rather, that works really well with the tablet. It's got a nice bright display. It's reasonably fast. It's a Core M, so it's a fanless design. I mean, wow, for the price, it's worth it. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review and subscribe to our YouTube channel.